God, I hate Bill Belichick. I was listening to him during the break, Leroy. <laughs> God, I hate him. Is he the only coach that does the college thing? Because, like, college, co college coaches will do this thing on press conferences. They always start with, like, a long breakdown of the opponent, right? Like, if you go and listen to a Mario Cristobal press conference, they'll be like, you know, Texas A&M, great running backs, linemen. They got five-star linemen, defense. Oh. They play a 4-3, blah, blah, blah. And I don't hear any coaches do this typically in the NFL. At least I've never heard a Dolphins coach do it. Bill Belichick will literally break down the entire Dolphins. So I guess he doesn't have to answer questions. Mm -hmm. He goes on for four minutes just breaking down the Dolphins. And I'm like, does anybody else do this? Um, it, it depends. Um, sometimes they do that to keep it moving, right? He's always done that. I know a lot of coaches that do it. It's not just him. But they preview the next opponent to stop getting questions for the last game. You see what I mean? To move on. It's Wednesday. So everything about last game is over anyway. But sometimes you'll have if sometimes you'll have you'll have people asking questions about last week still. So what they do is they come up, they make a statement about this week. And then it leads everybody to ask questions about this opponent. I've never heard so, anybody do it for 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 that really? long though. It's like a filibuster. But it just it just has to do with you know. Usually, there's a lot of coaches that comment on a new game. No, no, no. Maybe a little bit, but like he's going like I'm telling you, he went on Leroy. For, there we go, Vic Fangio. You know, obviously, got a lot of respect for Vic. In the game last week, Siler sack three out of four sacks in the game. A good you know challenge. Obviously, adjusting to a new system. We got a good look at them. Explosive players. Special teams. They got a fat cat kicker. I'm going <laughs> to miss one every now and then. Uh, uh, to a tongue of like, Iowa, Obviously, never beating them. Vlad, here's scared. what's funny about this. <laughs> He's calling Bill Belichick a filibuster. What? And his coach is Mike McDaniel. Hey, listen. Uh, nobody... <laughs> Dude, is, we make fun of the whole coach. What I'm not making fun of. I just I've never heard a co I've never heard a pro coach do that. I don't like that. Is really? that a Bill Belichick thing? Like he always you know, breaks a lot down of, the. A lot of coaches do it for three minutes. I yeah. feel like he's just doing it to get all the questions out of it. I know you're saying Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel, he, McDaniel does that too. He, he does to answer all the questions with one question. Oh man, could you imagine if Mike McDaniel made up his own monologue? Woo! That would be that would be a doozy. One man show. Now we doing the Tonight Show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm just saying they all they all kind of do it, and they do it to keep the questions uh, focus on this week, right? Um, yeah. And coach. if they try, what what do you think? What do you think that the the phrase the Bill Belichick phrase on the Cincinnati? Oh yeah, well I, of course, but that was after a loss. You were on the Cincinnati, but still. But like he also probably started. Like he's probably started. Like, they got Joe Burrow, <laughs> Jamar Chase. I don't know. If that, yeah. I think that's probably the Carson. That wasn't Palmer. at that time. No, that wasn't Palmer. at that time. Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer. That was John Kit. It probably more John Kitna. It was probably terrible Bengals. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so it, it's not it's not unique to him. I think you know what I mean? I you like just it. like you just doing you. I'm just looking for slander. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm just. just all coaches you know why? It. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why, Vlad. I'll tell you why. Too many people hopping on the bandwagon all of a sudden. You know who's bandwagon? Um, eh, the Dolphins. Everybody's kissing their ass I don't now. Get it with you. I don't get it with you. Hmm? You say that to people. No respect. No yep. love for the Dolphins. Right. Now they're showing love to the Dolphins. You're like. Oh, everybody's jumping on a bandwagon. I'm like, uh, dude, what, man? I, I'm I, when when you are Pope Petty, you are you are fueled by hate. I don't like praise. All right, I like it. I like respect. I don't like stupid things like you know, dum dums who are saying like Mac Jones is better than Tua, like Chris Sims, and then Chris Sims is going to pick the Dolphins to win the division. That's fake praise. That's fake love. I'm not about fake love. Wait, wait. Can I can I just say yeah, something? Do things be this right? Can can I can I, mean, I he's can not I better just, than two first of all here's the problem, Vlad. The people that he listens to for praise have already buried his guy. And so they can't, unlike you, who says these words, 
when I get you on the same stuff, yeah, the facts have changed. The facts can only change for you. They can't change for nobody else. Chris Sims can't come out to you and say the facts have changed. You ain't buying it. Yeah, you but I'm not gonna it. I'm not gonna sit like last year it happened with me with Trevor Lawrence, where it's like Trevor Lawrence, I apologize to him, but I'm not gonna sit here and kiss his ass all of a sudden. Like I don't feel that way. I wait, still feel wait, like he gets a free ride and he rides wait. Jeff Trevor Etienne's coattails. You, you know, I gotta you know, stick in, I gotta wait, wait, wait. I gotta hunker down. You wanna know why he gets a free pass? Because of that hair. Two words. Urban Meyer. Oh, he sucked. Right? I hate her. When you go so through that your rookie he, year, he gigs so quickly. You, you, you. When you go through that your first year, you need to damn near go see counseling. <laughs> Same thing with Tua. Just what Flo did to that man? First of all, Tua didn't ask to be drafted by the Dolphins. Nope. The Dolphins drafted him. So why wouldn't you put him in the best position to succeed instead of blasting him too because you didn't want him? So, yeah, some of these guys need to go through therapy. Like, Trevor Lawrence, he handled it like a champ because they hated Urban Meyer so much, he became the spokesperson for the team as a rookie. He didn't have to handle anything. Nobody cared. They just let him skate under the radar. Two of them are ready to write after, write off after a week. Now, all of a sudden, they want to be like, oh, my God. It's all right. It's fine. I'm just taking notes. That's all. That being said, you know Bill Belichick. He, he, he's got to be he's got to be seething that two is undefeated against him. Seething. Yeah. Seething. But I'm telling you what's going to happen. It's going to look like nine men in the middle of the field, along with this little trick. Right? Bring a guy off the corner and drop a lineman in the passing lane. So a D tackle might get a pick. Mm -hmm. because two are going to see it and throw it, and uh uh-oh, big man catching an interception. He's going to do a whole lot of things, and he's going to do one thing predominantly, because for the most part, everybody questions two's arm strength, right? So you know what he's going to do? He's going to play inside leverage on the the, the, the outside guys Mm -hmm. and outside leverage on the inside guys and funnel everything to the middle, or outside and make him have to use his arm to get to the outside guy. You know, I, I hear this arm strength too. Like I, you know, everybody just I, can't. I'm just tell. Listen, I, I, I know it's not you, you but I'm just saying. T- want. Here, here's the thing that annoyed me. Like yesterday, I'm I'm watching a clip of like uh, Colin Coward. He still's got to mention the arm strength, and I gotta I gotta say, kind of stupid for the guy who's got the most explosive plays in the game since 2014. Right. Kind of a dumb thing to to keep bringing it up because I saw I, I saw old piss whistle McGee on Monday Night Football throw up a bunch of punts to the Jets with his arm. So, like, who gives a rat's ass? Why do we keep mentioning about Tua's arm? He's the only guy we talk about his arm, and yet he keeps having explosive plays week in and week out. With Meanwhile, old Missile Dum Dum, number 17, is sitting here having to talk to himself because he thought number three on the Jets was his number one receiver. He goes, same bleep every week. I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out, dude. So Tua figured so, it out, and so he had a... So, Toby, Toby. here's the kicker. Here's the kicker in all of this. Here would be your your argument for the end of times. Drew Brees didn't have a strong arm either. Right. But don't be. It's not how strong your arm is. Ryan Leaf and uh, who's due from LSU? That guy, uh, Jamarcus radio. Russell. Jamarcus, Jamarcus Russell. Russell. Yeah, he had a had, hoose. Had cannons. You know what? Was? Kyler Murray has a hoose. Guy was going right. to play for the for the eight. The, look, great. Congratulations. You have an arm. You have nowhere to throw it. But you have again, you have no idea how to throw it. Again, the thing that bothers me about all this is, right? If you that caught up in, um, anything but the football game then that's shame on you. When they say, oh, he tested off. Yeah, you know what? Look like Tarzan, play like Jane. Right? That's 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 how, that's how that saying goes around the league. All these big, muscular, strong, four or five guys running around like they own it and don't do nothing. It's just like, but like, can we just, for the caveat cowboys up there, take your saddles off and put your spurs away. But because why? like, 
There's here. no reason because they don't have to bring up his arm strength anymore. It's not an issue. He's had Tyree Kill now for we, two seasons, we, we and know. Tyree Kill broke the receiving record. Everybody's like, "Oh, Tyree Kill, what's the point of having him there?" Ah, what? Those guys, they have more highlights than anybody in the league. It's the best show in the NFL, and everybody's going to keep going. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, two, we're going to pack the middle of the field because he doesn't quite have the arm. Oh, really? As, yeah, Chop, as Chapo says, game on the line, dude. Moving in the pocket. 45-yard dime to Tyreek to keep the game going, keep the game moving. So keep bringing up his arm, cowherd, with your fake praise, wait dummy. A wait a minute. What? The one thing you failed to realize is... Right? And this is what pisses me off about most people and even some guys that I talk to and do shows with, right? That the facts of the game don't change. Like you are trying to take 466 yards, which is unbelievable because a lot of people don't do that in the history of the NFL. And you're trying to make it something that it's not. No, like, yeah, I know. Why do like, you care? You know that. You know that. You know what it, it, it's to me. It's like the Jimmy Butler thing. It's kind of like, oh yeah, Jimmy Butler. You know, is he a superstar? Yes. How many times has he got to get to the finals? Yes, he's a superstar. Every time we're doing these caveats with these Miami guys. But but he, ridiculous, dude. I just think you get all worked up for nothing because. What they're saying is not accurate, and it go, it shows their ignorance. You want to know like, who is I accurate? I don't even worry about it. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. You want to know who is accurate? Who? Tua. Yeah, we've 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 gotten that. Familiar with his work? Huh? You familiar with his work? Very familiar. And, uh, I've been talking a lot about Dolphins Patriots this week. Moving on to. Week two of the NFL season, Sunday night football, primetime matchup for your Miami Dolphins. As, uh, of course, we're starting the season. A very impressive win. Probably the most exciting game back and forth. Seven lead changes last week. But uh, obviously with Bill Belichick, that could be always a challenge. Even with his bum-ass quarterback, he's a really good coach. And uh, typically uh, tries to make things difficult with all the playmakers that you got. He tries to take away your best weapon. That being said, Tua, undefeated against him. In his young career, he has never beaten Tua. And uh, we could hear a little bit here from the Patriots QB, Leroy, as uh, he uh, was asked about the challenges of uh, defending Tua, a lefty quarterback. Are there any differences in that? And uh, here is what the Pats coach had to say. Obviously, you faced Tua before, but what are some of the more unique challenges when it comes to defending a lefty quarterback as opposed to a right-hander? I mean, it's a little, a little more awareness in the pass rush. Certain plays that, you know, would favor the quarterback's throwing hand, you know, pocket movement plays. But he's athletic enough. He can go both ways. So it's, it's you know, it's certainly an awareness thing of knowing, you know, what it is. But I don't think it, like, fundamentally changes the offense too much. Wow. Deep. Um. I, I thought after the first comments that was it. I thought that was it too. I was like, oh, <laughs> I thought he was. Uh, um, I thought he has a weird case. It's like, does he want to keep talking? You know why? Because here's the deal. Bill Belichick gives you some of the greatest words in his life, nonchalantly, right? Like all of his conversations: mad, upset, excited yelling or whatever comes out the same way. Yeah. So if you don't know him, you don't know what part of it he's being serious or what part of it he's joking. And that's the part that catches you off guard because like, no matter what, you know, like I seen him break up a fight and get punched in the face. And he came in the B room and say, guys, I ain't breaking up no more fights, but if somebody gets in a fight and they get hurt, both guys are going to be suspended until both can play. That's it. That's how he delivered that that news. Right? He's just very, like, I don't know how to explain it, but if you know him, you know what parts of it 
you know, or because here's what he's going when he go into the locker room, right? It's like, what did he say with uh, Jalen Brown? Make him go left. Make him go left. So he's going to have some kind of message that he's going to send to his team because he wouldn't say it there, and that's probably why he thought about answering the question, right? That, oh, he's going to predominantly go left. Well, you know, Bill Belichick is going to try to defend that, and Mike McDaniel is going to send him out to the right. Just Look, little things like that. It's an interesting thing, man. And, and typically, Bill Belichick, also against rookie coaches, usually has his way. Uh, they split last year. They won the opener. Um, obviously, the Patriots don't seem like they had all their ducks in a row last year. But um, – I'm sure as as competitive as he is, if there is an offensive challenge, whatever it is, he knows that the guy hasn't beaten him. I'm sure it has been driving him nuts. I don't think it's a lefty-righty thing. I think that he's probably just trying to figure out what the hell makes this guy have so much success against us. Right, right. Um, here is a little bit more on him. This is uh, about the Dolphins and all the motion that they use. Uh, here's the Pats head coach. Given how explosive they are, how challenging is it to – try to contain or keep track of uh, how they're using motion the different ways they, they motion. Yeah, and that's what they do. Yeah, it's a lot of it. So, yeah, I mean, we got to deal with it last year. Hmm. You you want me to tell you why? I love it. You want me to tell you why the, the, the Dolphins motion is so unique? Tell me. Short motion. Right, so they'll motion a the guy, from yeah, yeah the inside, I, from the inside right to the outside right. Yeah, I know right? what that means. You tell people though; you, you let them know. <laughs> so, say if you have a slot receiver and you have a a, a guy on the line of scrimmage on the right hand side, right? Most guys will motion across the ball, right? But he motions those guys out to the same side. Which, if you're chasing, you're getting ready to run across the line. Of screen. Boom. Chases inside. The outside guy runs a slant. That that motion guy goes around the outside. And now you're like, he motioned on the same side. Uh, Bill Belichick was also asked about uh, if pressure works against the Dolphins uh, because of uh, all the speed that they have. This is what Belichick had to say about pressuring Tua. And if that works. Against, against the Chargers, um, Waddle and, and Hill both averaged over 19 yards every time they touched the ball, and Tua had zero sacks. Is there a correlation there in terms of pressure on Tua and allowing plays to develop, and that is one of the keys to against us against that uh, weapon against those weapons? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you pressure, you better get there because when those guys get the ball and there's not many people around them, you know, you're looking at a lot of yardage. And, a lot of their yards are run after catch yards. I mean, it's not all like go routes and post routes. It's it's actually not a lot of that. It's a lot more, you know, catch and run plays. So you start bringing a lot of people, you better get there because there's going to be a lot of space behind you if they get the ball. And they're both very good with the ball in their hands. Which is the same thing Tom Brady used to do. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, well, cool thing uh, here, but also, Bill, he had uh, like 300 yards in the air this past week, so it wasn't all run after catch this past week. Missed that. You're taking pot shots. Here he goes. There, there we go with the pot shots again at two. Here we go, Vlad. Here, here we, we go. go. This rat bastard, Vlad. he is so salty that he can't figure two out. Oh, it's not all go routes. No, no, it's not all there. Okay, dude. All right. All right, dude. Okay. All right, dude. okay. Now we're getting spicy, Belichick. You see, he didn't say nothing. Oh, 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 dude. You know you got to read between the lines when it comes to this savant. He's you know going out there, and he is taking pot. You know what, Tough Lad? That's a pot shot. I'm going to give you the highest shot, compliment. Dude. I'm going to give you the highest compliment ever. You are the MJ. Finding nothing to make something out of, like you know how Jordan would fight. You know how Jordan would be like, "Oh, oh, the guy dropped thirty-two on me, and the guy even dropped thirty-two points on him. He just needed a reason." You find any little thing to motivate a team that's already motivated, a fan base that is excited. You look for the most petty thing, the pettiest thing, to get you guys going. 
There's Thank no you. need to do that. Thank That's you. Fun. We'll take a break. I, I give you credit. I give you credit. You are the MJ of this. Take a break. Back after this. <laughs> 